Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Today we'll be covering how to build back traveler trust with your hotel guests and how to effectively use technology to create more satisfying guest experiences. Thank you so much all of you for joining us. We have an absolutely great session lined up for you today, brought to you uh, collectively by Sendine Guest Review and Tourism Update. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping details. Um, the webinar has been recording and all those registered will receive a link to the recording by email soon after this webinar. All attendees are on mute, so if you'd like to ask a question during the webinar, please use the questions module on the sidebar of your screen. Your questions and comments will only be seen by today's uh, panelists and we've reserved some time at the end of the webinar to run through them. Following this webinar, if you'd like to access more learning opportunities, please check out the Sendine resource library on sendine.com or visit guestreview.com. Let me introduce the panelists. Um, Nicola Graham is the Vice President of Marketing at Sendine. She oversees all marketing efforts for Sendine. And in her role, she leads the demand generation, product marketing, and sales development teams to provide thought leadership to the industry, drive demand for Sendine's products, and collaborate with a commercial team to drive sales and growth for Sendine. Our social selling superstar, Amy Bradford, and former avid polo player, might I add, loves to connect with hoteliers and hospitality professionals on LinkedIn and help properties make the most of guest reviews guest feedback program and enhance their online reputations. Let's have a look, quick look at the agenda. We're going to be focusing on how to build confidence and trust with hotel guests, how to create engaging guest touch points, personalized experiences with guest profile data, how to effectively manage guest feedback, and then we'll have some time for the Q&A. Great, thanks Adele. Hi everyone, um, really great to be here today and thank you for joining. So yes, at Sendine, we are fully focused on services and technology for the hospitality industry. We're a catalyst for digital transformation and help hotels around the globe drive profitability and guest loyalty through an integrated technology platform that aligns revenue, e-commerce, distribution, marketing and sales teams with centralized data, applications and analytics. This enables hoteliers to capture more demand and accelerate growth for their business. Hi, nice to see everyone. Um, so at Guest Review, we hope help hotels um, and anybody in the hospitality industry understand their guests in more detail and gain insights from their feedback and online reviews to improve their satisfaction scores and drive bookings. Um, guest Review is a comprehensive guest feedback and online reputation management tool for busy accommodation providers. And now if we look at number one on the agenda, current landscape in the hospitality industry. Okay, so if we look at current events around the globe, we're still dealing with COVID-19. You know, we've all heard enough about it, but it is still there and it's still impacting the industry. Then if we look at winter hotel occupancy in South Africa, it is exceeding pre-pandemic levels. Then you've got your average hotel occupancy, which has doubled from May 2019 to May 2022. April 2022, um, hotel revenues see year on year growth off a low score from 2020 to early 2021, but it's still far weaker than the pre lockdown levels. All right, so um, or looking at it from the perspective of the hotelier, um, we can see that there's, you know, obviously a lot of challenges over the last two years, all of which we will continue to face um, as we shift now into recovery mode. So first of all, um, we are faced with evolved guest expectations. So there's a new type of traveler today. They expect brands to know more about who they are, what they're looking for, and to understand their needs. They also expect a seamless digital experience throughout their travel, travel journey. In a world that revolves around consumers and their data, the expectation is now there that hosp for hospitality to align with other industries leading the charge in these everyday needs. Next up is, um, <laughs> with this change in expectation, we can see that legacy technology falls um, 
is falling up, is, is leaving us falling behind. So no, no more can we rely on spreadsheets, notepads, sticky notes, and antiquated technology systems that don't speak to each other. We need technology that can integrate with the platforms that consumers use day in and day out so they can seamlessly enjoy their experience end to end. And as Amy mentioned, um, alongside these technology and expectation changes, we're also seeing a huge shift in the workforce. While in South Africa, we're seeing high rates of, you know, certainly amounts of unemployment, there are still many vacancies for roles in hotels and needs are not being met for the demands put on teams. We're seeing hotels running on reduced staff across the globe, which is a huge burden um, for those uh, taking on more than ever before. The OTAs are still here. We saw Booking and Expedia spend over $7 billion in marketing in 2021, and they'll exceed that spend this year again. So the fight for direct is still strong, and this weighs heavily on bottom line revenue numbers. And finally, we're also seeing a shift in traveler segments. While business travel is on the return, there is definitely less of it given the huge shift to remote working and virtual meetings. We're also seeing new segments like leisure come into play where hotels must meet the needs of business travelers, either continuing their stay on their own or with their families to have a leisure trip after their stay. And all these changes, especially at once, can actually create the perfect storm. So this is where technology comes in. I know many of you might think, well, how on earth can I find time to implement new technology for my hotel? My teams are struggling already. Who has the time for it? But this is where integrated technology is key. The more interconnected your systems are, the more can be automated and simplified for your staff. Going on the hunt for a single source of truth for all of your data will allow you to put automation and simplicity as a top priority. And this in turn will absolutely help your team manage their day-to-day -day tasks. When it comes to sourcing the right technology stack, you can set up a cross-departmental steering committee at your hotel, and they can lead the charge on technology that needs to be sourced and collaborate across teams to ensure all needs are being met for the whole business. The last thing you want is one department saying, hey, we need this, then working in a silo to implement a platform that doesn't connect or work with any of the other systems. Technology that is right for your business can be used to automate many of your staff's day-to-day -day tasks and even be used to target specific types of guests based on any data point you have. It truly can be the way to build the right synergy between sales, <clears throat> revenue, marketing, and distribution and help drive revenue where and when you need it. So how do we now build this into confidence and trust amongst our guests? Given everything we've talked about so far, the best way to do this is really to build confidence in your brand. This confidence is critical to ensure guests make that booking at your hotel and hopefully return or stay loyal to your brand in other places or parts of the world. So how do you do that? <clears throat> First of all, you want to maintain direct and transparent communications with your guests. It's critical that whenever you engage with them, you are open, honest, transparent, and relevant. Second of all, you want to engage with your guests at every stage of their journey. This means looking at what emails, texts, WhatsApps, digital marketing, et cetera, they'll be seeing or experiencing before and after they book and during and after their stay. Thirdly, you want to emphasize cleanliness, digital and seamless experiences that resonate with your target market. And finally, <clears throat> this all needs to be done in a tailored way for each guest. Personalization is key. So combining segmentation and tailored offerings to show you truly understand your guests and their preferences is critical. So how do you go about personalizing all these interactions? It sounds quite complex, I can imagine. But ultimately, it all comes back to the technology that we talked about earlier. More than ever, hoteliers must centralize their data so they can leverage data points from every aspect of the travel journey. Here we can see the different stages of the traveler journey in this blue diagram. And while this is heavily simplified, you can see there's still even a lot to it in this format. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first of all, 
you need to know who you are communicating with. A customer relationship management or CRM, or even a customer data platform like a CDP can help you do this. Both of these data warehouse platforms centralize your data into one place and allow you to integrate it with any platform so you can feed data points in from other areas and leverage them across different areas of your business. Once you have that data, <clears throat> you then need to communicate with these guests. As we know, a guest traveling alone for business will require different information compared with a guest traveling with their family for leisure. And simply remember that data is your friend. You need to use it um, and have it centralized to allow you to learn more about your guests and tailor the experience to meet their needs. Okay. So it's keys to engaging touch points um, and you should always strive for personalization. Um, embrace your brand identity and get it out there as much as possible and make sure that you're reducing friction. So you keep that communication as simple and as quick as possible while collecting the most vital information to you. Um, like at Guest Review, what we do is we customize the surveys based on the type of accommodation and the type of questions that you're wanting. So that way you can make the right operational decisions. Um, always include the human. So always make sure that if you're getting responses and personalizing that, it feels like it's coming back from a certain person at the hotel. And then just keep testing. Always keep trying and updating your information that you're wanting to collect and make sure that you're getting the right information at the right time. That might change seasonally depending on activities that you're offering, the type of travelers or the type of events that are around. So always make sure you're aware of not only what's going on at the hotel, but why your guests are coming to you and why they're visiting your area. Great. And as we look at automation on that side, here are some great examples that you can see on the screen of digital experiences online that do just that. So through email or digital marketing, you can automate the visuals or the information that is displayed to every guest based on the data that you have. So in the top right, we can see tailored emails showing different images and content based on the person they are sending to. And now this can all be automated at the CRM level and enable you to you know, communicate one message to another um, but this doesn't require an individual at the back end creating these emails from scratch. It's all automated based on the data. In the bottom right, we can see a digital ad complementing the look and feel of the website. Again, this seamless online experience will see a far higher click through and booking rate as there's no breakdown in communication between the two. <clears throat> this actually example shows how you can re-engage guests who have stayed before with really emotive visuals and, and messaging, like remember this view and, and showing a lovely snapshot from the pool that might encourage them to book again. So you can use this both in digital marketing or in an email that goes out to a guest after they've stayed with you. So in brief, just remember to use a combination of simple and complex personalization, but leverage the automation that you have and then provide personal touches um, these make all the difference and will be the things that the individuals remember and will align and tie them to that confidence in the brand again that we talked about. And finally, align your messaging. So make sure that you're consistent across the different means of communication, um, because that that really is what will drive the, um, the alignment to your brand and that recognition down the road for when it comes to loyalty. Effective reputation management. So we all know we've got massive online sources like bookings.com, Google, TripAdvisor, the list is really endless. And you know you can really, really boost and manage your online reputation without it being too time consuming. Um, and that can depend on the hotel's policy. So some hotels will feel that it's, there's no need to respond to every single review that is online. Some people feel that it is really important to respond and communicate with everybody. So it does depend on the hotels and the types of reviews that you're getting. Um, my personal um, feeling is that if you've got a negative review, you must jump on it as quickly as, as possible and make sure you do a management response to it. So if we look at the virtual cycle of the guest and their feedback, 
Obviously, you know, at the start, some guests will come through those OTAs and there'll be new guests. And that's how we want them to come to us. We, it's 25% cheaper to keep a repeat customer than it is to find a new one. So let your OTAs do that work. Let them find the new ones for you. And then as soon as they start communicating, you convert them into booking direct with you for each and every other stay. So if we look at the um, diagram here, we've got the guest books data um, is entered into the CRM. So that's when they book. The guest stays at the hotel. Um, and then we can send the survey to them. The guest falls out of the survey and then the guest review submits the online review. So what that means is as part of the process of doing the survey, they can also do a TripAdvisor review through the survey, helping you boost your online reputation. So the more online reviews you get, the better you're going to be online, as long as they're positive, of course, um, then that's what you want to drive for. But even the negative ones, you can turn into positives by doing the correct management response. So don't be nervous about having an integration in a survey. It really does. It makes um, a massive difference. So typically, guest review clients will see a 100 to 300% increase in the number of trip trip advisor reviews they receive and a 4% increase in that bubble rating as well. Um, and don't forget that guests can go ma manually onto TripAdvisor or bookings.com or any of those sites and leave a review that they, what, however they feel. So once those reviews are submitted um, and the feedback is submitted, the guest review collects all of that feedback into one place. We then um, will alert the hotel based on low scores in surveys so that they can jump on that feedback and turn that be guest back into a repeat customer. And then the hotel can analyze that feedback as well. We also can send that feedback into different um, solutions like Sendine so that it grows that guest profile. So you can understand that guest in more detail. So every time they book, you'll understand how their last stay was, what their last review was, and that information gives you a much richer data profile to work with. Then if we look at 10% improvement on review rating increases hotel room sales by more than 5%, which is massive. So, you know, you want to be looking at your feedback data, you want to be looking at your reviews, and you want to be finding out what operational changes you can make to improve that guest experience, because that ultimately impacts in your sales. Using post-day post surveys to encourage online reviews increases your view volume by 230%. So I said between 100 and 300%, so we're on the money there, which is good. So, you know, driving those reviews is really, really important. It has a massive impact on your shop window, which is your online review sites, because that's generally where guests will be checking um, to see whether they want to actually book from book your hotel or book the hotel down the road. Reviews collected from surveys gave 4% higher rating than organically submitted reviews. So this is just because you're giving them all of the questions within the survey. So they're answering it without even realizing that they're answering um, a review going through to TripAdvisor. So it means you collect all of that data. And then each additional star out of five for room quality is linked to a 21% increase in room price, which means that you get more bang for your buck. Um, so making sure that everything is done to the best of your ability and your guests are happy is a win-win for everyone. It means you can in increase your revenue per available room and things like that. Great. Thanks, Amy. <clears throat> so I think before we wrap up, um, just a couple of points of things to remember moving forward um, that, you know, really it is ultimately about, you know, first of all, consolidating the data that you have. Um, this is critical um, if you um, want to try and make improvements to those kind of key aspects that we looked at at the beginning of the webinar. Um, and, and once you have that and you've got the integrated systems that you want to work with, 
for example, in this case with um, Sendine and with Guest Review, you can then integrate the data seamlessly and use that data to learn about how to communicate best with your guests moving forward. So ultimately, you can return them into repeat visitors that will keep coming back to your property or your brand time and time again. Thank you very much, ladies, for that, um, for those invaluable insights. We've got a few questions that have come through. Um, the first one deals with reduced staffing at the hotel, which I think is a challenge that a lot of hoteliers face. The, the uh, respondent says, I'm just too busy to implement tech at the moment. Asking, is it really worth the investment when I'm not earning the revenue I used to, and while still trying to hit occupancy levels from pre-COVID? Uh, Amy, do you want to start with that? or? Yeah, I can start with that. Um, so I think that it, it really depends on the tech that you're looking at adding. Are you looking at doing a new PMS? Are you looking at implementing a CRM? Are you looking to redo your whole tech stack? You've got to understand what bits you want to change and what bits you want to keep the same. But if you're looking to put in, let's say a new feedback system, and hopefully it'll be guest review, um, you know, that's a really quick process. Whereas you, you look at some implementing a CRM, that takes a little bit more time to set up. So, you know, my, my personal advice would be figure out where the gaps are in what you've got and then look at filling those first. And then um, if you're going to review your whole tech stack, um, figure out what's working really well at the moment and then what you want to add on to that. And I'm not sure Nicola can... Um, add a little bit more into that as well from the CRM side, because that is, is a little bit of a longer process than adding something like a guest feedback system that takes about two weeks. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. So um, it, it is, it is a, it is a heavier lift in terms of implementation. However, um, I, what I would say is that um, the rewards of um, investing the time um, far outweigh the, the, the time investment, if you will, um, the one benefit to many of these technology, well, this technology systems we talked about is ultimately the end goal, which is the automation and the personalization, right? So at the moment, your teams are working really hard. Um, I'm sure, you know, trying to connect the dots, dots between systems, trying to understand, you know, when should we send this, who, what information should we send to them? Whereas ultimately with a centralized data platform, you have the ability to automate a lot of that. So that in the end will free up a lot of your team's time. So it's one of those questions, I think Amy put it perfectly, was that determine exactly where the gaps are. If this is one of those gaps, then I can guarantee it's worth the time and the rewards will be seen once it's been implemented. Um, but, but you will need to invest um, longer than you know a couple of weeks. Um, to making sure it's set up correctly, um, but but it's definitely worth it in the long run. Yeah, and I, I think I oh. think the other thing, sorry, just to add on to that is if you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? Guests mm -hmm. are looking for that seamless process right now. <clears throat> if yeah. you don't have a seamless process in place, it's costing you money because the hotel just down the road or just on the other at the side of the road will have that implemented and they will be getting the bookings and you'll be missing out. And you know, there's 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 quick ways of doing these things now. And ultimately, <clears throat> the larger the property you have, the more integrations you have, the longer it might take. However, if you are a relatively small property with um, limited number of systems at the moment, this can it can actually be very quick. So um it's easy to kind of get swallowed up into the, the fear of, oh my goodness, how long will this take and um, how much time will I have to dedicate to it? But ultimately most of the technology vendors out there now provide such um, comprehensive service and support during these implementations that really they just work as an extension of your team um, to make sure that you, know, you can keep doing your day job while the software gets um, developed and, and, and integrated into your systems. Fantastic. Thank you so much, ladies, and very good points. Um, we come now to, you spoke earlier about the OTA channels, and hoteliers are saying that a lot of their customers come via the OTA channels. 
One respondent has two questions. He says, mm -hmm. how do we convert them to booking directly when we don't have their email addresses? And secondly, how can we attract more guests directly when we have to compete with the OTAs? Nikki, do you want to kick us off with that one? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so <clears throat> maybe I'll um, take the second part and perhaps Amy mm -hmm. can do the first. <clears throat> so um, how do we attract more, um, I think, um, guests directly when we have to compete? So, um, you know, I think this kind of speaks to the um, one of the comments I made in, in the slides um, in the webinar was really about how you can um, leverage the data in the right way across different forms of engagement. So for example, um, if you are looking to um, target um, a new batch of um, type of guests based on um, you know, lookalike models, for example, you can leverage kind of digital marketing tactics. And again, leveraging a CRM data pool of the types of guests that you have currently, and then using that in your digital marketing, like through Google or Facebook ads or Instagram or any of the, uh, the digital platforms, you can actually reach a whole range of new guests that actually um, match the type of guest that you're looking for. Um, there's a lot of modeling and data integrations that work super easily now and, and connecting them to your CRM gives you that added layer of, of um, conversion. And then um, you can serve them ads based on the information that you have that will drive them directly to your website. So there was that one example of a digital ad that aligned really nicely with the landing page on the website and that's really important, right? If you've got someone browsing the web, looking at a travel blog or um, researching an area that they want to travel to, if they see an advert for your brand um, and they click on it because they like the message or they like the image, that experience needs to be fully translated through when they land on the website. Otherwise, you see huge drop off rates. So having that um, alignment there is really critical. And then obviously a very seamless means of getting to the booking um, engine on your website then after that is really important. <clears throat> and I, I think Nikki just touching on that from from an online side as well is is don't forget about social proof. Use your reviews that you're mm -hmm. getting from mm -hmm. customers, put them on your Facebook page, yeah. put them put them around. you know that also helps shows transparency in your brand as well. So you know use everything that is at your fingertips and make the most of getting that message out there. Um, so communication, communication is key in everything that we do as humans. So, you know, quite often hoteliers will ask at the beginning of the journey, does the guest want to opt in? And they haven't had that experience yet. So a guest review, we find that when you put that option into the post day survey, you actually grow your database a, a lot quicker and you actually then get guests that you want to remarket to and you can figure out their segmentation from the questions that you're asking and if it's fed back into um, Sendine then you can use that to build those campaigns even more so you know I hope that helps. Absolutely um, so this is an interesting one uh, that I think a lot of us um, are asking is how do you ensure that you don't over communicate with health with hotel guests who would like to take that one i'm sure yeah i can take that one um and amy do chime in if you want to add anything of course um so yeah this is kind of a, a very common problem adele as you said of the a daily life now we're kind of we're inundated with emails from different brands where we get now WhatsApp messages, we get text messages, we get phone calls, you know, it's it's everywhere surrounding us. And as our phones are an extension of us now, it follows us wherever we go. So I think the important thing to remember, and again, this comes back to the data warehouse, is if you have a record in one central place of when and how you have communicated with that individual, you can then build up an automated cadence, <clears throat> which is, you know, not over communicating, but more kind of um, 
easygoing, if you will, for that individual. So if you have automation in place using a platform like a CRM, you can say, hey, I would only like to send emails every couple of weeks or maybe every month if it's a newsletter or, you know, in the lead up to a guest arriving, you may want to spread it out, um, you know, by every six months out, then, you know, three months out, or maybe two weeks before they arrive. Um, so thinking about, you know, timelines and, and, and that piece of it is really important. And when you can layer in different means of communication, like a WhatsApp message or a Facebook message um, as well, you can add that again into the timeline. And that's, that's where you can gain back a little bit of that control. When you lose visibility, into your data set and how and when you're communicating with individuals, that's when people get over communicated to. You know, <clears throat> a lot of the times marketing teams that don't have sophisticated or any kind of analytics or, or, or data seeing how and when they've communicated, they tend to blast their database with emails, you know, to everyone that they can to try and get as many clicks or get as many conversions. But that's when you run into the issues of over communicating too many emails being sent. They're not relevant. And they're, um, it's, it's how you detract from your brand nowadays. Thank you. I so think you I made, you made the point earlier as well about analytics being so key. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. Um, here's the other question. If guests are already le leaving reviews on platforms like TripAdvisor, Expedia, et cetera, what is the value then in also requesting direct surveys? Who would like so to take we, that one, Amy? Yeah, I'll, I'll grab that one. <laughs> so, so with direct surveys, you get to ask questions that you want the answers to. You know, you might see in online reviews that mattress or bad night sleep quality or things are being mentioned a lot. And the data that you're collecting can help you determine what room that's in is it the mattress? Is it the pillows? Is the temperature too hot? You know, you can get a lot of information from your surveys and guests, if you ask them, will always be willing to answer them. You, but, you know, you can customize surveys and, and filter them down and test new things as well. So what might be an issue today isn't going to be an issue next month. It might be a certain type of guest that is mentioning certain things um, all the time so you know then you know you can segment that data and use it wisely so you know have luxury rooms advertised differently to your your lower rooms so you they attract the right type of guests as well absolutely thank you and I think I'm going to stay with you for this last question that we have time for is um what is the best course of action with negative or fake reviews? I'll take this one, Nikki, if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. So, <laughs> with, um, if it's online, no, none of your potential guests will know that that's fake or it didn't happen. So you've got to nail the management response. You know, it, it may be that that guest um, left the review for the wrong hotel and they had a terrible experience, you know, if you go into a long story about it, you lose the potential guest. Make sure you do a really clear management response that's empathetic and doesn't put off any potential guests reading that because that's how um, potential guests are gonna figure out that you care. But you know, you can report them to the site where, you, where it is fake, but it can take a couple of days um, to remove them from those different sites. So always make sure there is a management response to that because in those couple of days, you may have lost a few bookings based on that review. Nikki, do you want to weigh in on this? Um, no, I, I think uh, I think Amy covered um, everything there. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it sucks that fake reviews are a thing, but I think as long as your team internally are, are aligned and have a, a strategy for um, responding and making sure that, um, there is that out there, then, then that's great. That's the best great, way. To thank you. Thank you so much. So that's all the questions we have time for today. Um, if you have more questions, please send them through the following email address you'll see on your screen now. Um, and our panelists will get back to you with a response. It's time to wrap up. So lovely to see so many people listening to the webinar today. 
If you are interested in getting more information about technology solutions that will help your hotel teams thrive, please contact info at sendine.com. Um, let me read that email address again. It's info at sendine.com. Thank you so much, ladies, and thank you so much to our to those of us, to those of you who tuned in. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.